still a stretch. This time, I'd like to call the Garden Grove Housing Authority Authority meeting to order. Would the secretary please call the roll? Commissioner Beckles. Present. Commissioner Broadwater. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Wynn. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Here. Commissioner Fawn. Here. Chair Beard. Here. And the first item is oral communications related to the Housing Authority. Seeing none, we'll move to item two, reorganization of the Housing Authority, selection of a chair and a vice chair. Who's the current vice chair? It was Mayor Dalton. Oh, well, you need to get a new one then. <laughs> <laughs> Can I nominate uh, Chris Fan? Are we at that point? Uh, we're doing the uh, chairman first. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Are, are you currently chair? I am currently the chair. Would you like to stay chair? I, I would be willing and yeah. able. Okay. To do so, uh, a motion for yeah. Chris to stay on as chair, and I second it. Call for the vote. Most received seven yes votes. Okay, now it's time for the vice chair selection. Yeah, now I'd like to nominate Chris Fan for. Chris Fan has been nominated. Is there a second? A second that motion. A second. Call for the vote. Most received seven yes votes. Okay. <coughs> item number three, consent items. Does anybody care to pull an item? No. Move to approve. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received, seven yes votes. Uh, no public hearings tonight. Items for consideration done. Uh, number six, matters from the chair, commissioners, or director. Anything? Yes. I want to make a quick statement that our housing um, authority has been doing an excellent job on uh, accepting a lot of applications and, and their inspections and also that the city has done uh, an excellent job also in allocating the funds to the housing um, recipients. We have not taken any funds away even though the economy is very bad. Every year um, more is added on to that budget. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Move for adjournment. Second. Go for the vote. <laughs> Motion received seven yes votes. Free to go. <laughs> See you next See you. month. Okay. Oh, please. Wait, Danny. We got a little. Do we have our Yeah, we do. Wait, Danny. We're looking for the stool to get the sun. Who's still in the stool? Yeah. Just the keys in the reach. Oh, they got it. They've we got it. We've got more money over here. Oh. You're such a big production. Weber and Susan. Let's mix it up a little bit. Okay, at this time, we'll open up the Garden Grove City Council. Oh. Ms. Baylor, will you please call roll? Councilmember Beard? Here. Councilmember Jones? Here. Councilmember Fawn? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Wynn? Here. Mayor Broadwater? Here. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, and then uh, who's doing the invocation? Ms. Emery. Ms. Emery? First. What? We do that first. I realize that. I was just a test. <laughs> Dear great and glorious creator, during this presidential inauguration week, we recognize the unique and powerful role that government plays in the lives of its citizens. We are indeed thankful for our democracy and the ability to transfer power peacefully. 
And now we remember the words of our first president, who in 1783 prayed, My earnest prayer that God would have you and the state over which you preside in his holy protection, that he would incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I guess we'll go to oral communications. When I go to oral communications for the Garden Grove City Council, for the Sanitary District, and also for the successor agency. Alicia Massilio. Good evening, Mayor Broadwater and City Council. Thank you so much for hearing us. Um, Linda and myself are here for the Relay for Life of Garden Grove, and we are back, and we're really, really excited for um, this cancer walk coming in July, July 13th and 14th, and it's going to be next to our Garden Grove High School. And so we wanted just to come and say hello. We're going to be coming to many more meetings and really hope to see a, maybe a city council team or a city's team to come and walk for our 24-hour event. Don't worry, you don't have to walk for all the 24 hours. But, you know, if you want, it's a great, great goal. Um, I did give you all a flyer of the event as well as the informa informational meeting. If you have any, um, you know, want and desire to help us plan this awesome event, um, this year we're hoping to raise um, over $25,000 to help Garden Grove cancer patients and their families. We are going to be meeting on Thursday, February 7th, locally at the Marie Callender's off Brookhurst to discuss Relay and and, you know, again, planning the event. So if you, any of you would like to come or any of you have any leads um, for anyone who would like to help us, that'd be really great. Our emails are on both the flyers. And again, we're just really, really excited. It's a lot of fun. We um, pamper and we celebrate our cancer survivors. And uh, again, it's a day in the life of someone with cancer, and that's why it's 24 hours long. And we're just going to be a very fun and local event. So thank you again for hearing us. Do you have the time for that on uh, on Thursday? I do, 6 to 8 p.m. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, and free appetizers. Free appetizers. Thank you. Roll Alvarez. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for the chance to join you. My name is Raul Alvarez. I'm uh, the director of the Cypress College Foundation, and I'm here tonight to talk about the Cypress College 2013 Americana Awards, which are February the 23rd, uh, 2013, at the Disneyland Hotel. Uh, I want to thank Garden Grove for your longstanding support of Cypress College. Uh, we have 800 students enrolled in Cypress from the city of Garden Grove. That's a good number of, of students pursuing higher education um, at Cypress from, from the city, 800 students. I want to also thank you and all of the voters for your support of community colleges and passing uh, Proposition 30 in November. What that meant to Cyprus, what that meant just to our campus was that we added 1,000 classroom seats this semester that we would not have had had it not passed. Uh, so it, it's gratifying to be adding some things back rather than continuing to limit limit class size. So we appreciate that. We don't take it for granted, and, and I'm delighted to say that that has translated into a 1,000 classroom, classroom seats. Regarding our event, our 2013 38th Annual Americana Awards, uh, we have approximately 600 people in attendance. We've been averaging that the last four years. Uh, business and civic leaders from the eight primary cities that the college serves, including, including Garden Grove. Uh, many of you have participated uh, before. We certainly invite your participation uh, again. Um, our 2013 Citizen of the Year is Bill Dalton, as you are probably aware. I think it's so funny. I've been at the college 12 years, been coming to these meetings, and I think this is the first meeting Bill Dalton has not attended, and he's our, he's our honoree. 
Um, we've gotten a lot of cooperation from the city. We appreciate it. The uh, information about Bill, the, uh, the a lot of support from the city and from the, the community. The, the We have a couple of our city committee members here, our Garden Grove Americana City Committee, uh, both Sandy Thomas and uh, Jeremy Harris. Stand up. They do a great job. They selected um, uh, Mayor Dalton, and uh, we have other members of the committee as well. Uh, K-Bar, uh, Pam Shear are, are two of them. Thank you. The uh, proceeds from our event support the work of Cypress College, of the Cypress College Foundation. Last year, we awarded over $300,000 in student scholarships. We also award emergency assistance to students, uh, uh, book grants, book loans, faculty uh, awards. And then we fund some special projects as well, our Basic Skills Initiative, our Veterans Center. Uh, we have funded in the last, uh, just in the last couple of months. Um, our 2013 Man of the Year is Trevor Hoffman. Trevor Hoffman, who retired from Major League Baseball from the San Diego Padres, Padres, perhaps the best relief pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball, and he attended Cypress College. So we're particularly um, looking forward to acknowledging one, one of our own. And for all of his exploits on the field, uh, he has done just as much off the field, and I think we're more proud of that. In 2008, he was the recipient of the Branch Rickey Award for Major League Baseball for what he gives back to the, the community. So the, we have had Garden Grove participate before. We certainly welcome your participation uh, this year. Certainly we know what challenging times these are uh, financially. Uh, but on behalf of our students, the beneficiaries, on behalf of our, our honorees, Mayor Dalton, the other honorees, Trevor Hoffman, uh, we do ask that you participate in the event, that you support the event. Um, I've had folks comment that the, uh, with a table costing $2,500, well, that's, you know, that's not inexpensive. And that's true. It, it is not inexpensive. Um, but with 800 students from Garden Grove, that's $3.12 for each student that we educate at, at Cypress College from the city. And that seems like a pretty good, pretty good investment to me. Um, lastly, the city will once again have the chance to, to boast a little bit. Uh, by doing a, exhibiting a display at the event of the city and of the the honoree, uh, last year Garden Grove participated. Jeremy's got your uh, exhibit from last year. Uh, my handsome assistant, Jeremy Harris, and we'll be leaving a couple of blank um, boards this year, so you can uh, you can update these or you can you know, prepare uh, new ones, but we will have those on, on display again. They were a great, a great hit. Our city's really stepped up. So I will leave invitations for you. Um, and I, we do appreciate the partnership that we have with Garden Grove. I don't know if you have any questions, but um, we look forward to honoring uh, Bill Dalton and, and the others and look forward to having Garden Grove well represented again. Thank you. Alex Muhammad. Good evening, Your Honorable uh, Council Members and uh, Mayor Bradwater. Um, I would like to address the uh, issue on the tow contract as far as the uh, miles that um, are, are required for the distance between the tow city, uh, the tow, tow yard and the um, city limits. Uh, our company is Southside Towing, and we had just uh, expanded our yard and moved into a different location. Uh, our location is now 1.5 acres. It, it was uh, about half an acre. So we expanded it, and uh, we are now about 300 yards out of that compliance. So um, I would respectfully request that if you guys could switch that to three miles rather than uh, two to uh, allow us to bid for the contract. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Mr. Vertel, how would he go about uh, applying for a variance? Well, I, we'll be uh, commencing the RFP process very shortly, and uh, he'll be, if he's interested, he'll uh, receive a, a packet to respond to. So probably at, as part of that process, put in his formal request, and then we can evaluate whether or not, um, you know, it, there, there's 
uh, warrants going beyond the two mile. But that would probably be the best uh, opportunity to do it is once we send out the packets to those who uh, wish to participate in the RFP process. Okay. My only concern is that um, if we were selected that there might be um, an issue of someone else saying that, you know, these guys are outside of the two-mile uh, limit and they shouldn't qualify based on what's written. Uh, that, that would be my only concern. Yeah. I can believe that will be a concern. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not about item for consideration. I'm going to pull it for discussion later. You done? I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beatrice Jones. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, new city council members. I'm Beatrice Jones. Um, oh, about a 35 year resident of the city of Garden Grove. And um, I'm pleased to inform you, number one, that the month of February is approaching and for you to be prepared for the Orange County Black History Parade and Cultural Fair. This year is the second year we are being hosted by the city of Anaheim. We spent the first four quarter of a, qu quarter of a century at uh, Santa Ana and uh, we've been embraced by Anaheim. Uh, the parade will be on February the 2nd, and it's a huge parade. It's less than a mile, a very short walk. I'm even going to walk it myself. Um, so I want to make certain that you are aware of it, and if you can make it, come out, learn a little something about the history and culture of the fair and the people in the city, in the county of Orange. Um, the Orange County Heritage Council is now heading the show for this event, and uh, they have a new theme this year, which is called The Legacy Never Ends, New Vines Grow from Strong Roots. Um, I'm putting a call out for any and all women veterans. We plan to have a huge marching unit of all women veterans, all branches of service, not only just the Army, all branches of service, and to have a decent show. Uh, the National Council of Negro Women are working very hard to see that this happens because we want to honor our women veterans this year. We did not get to do it last year, and it's very important to us. Uh, I'll come back again, and give, I think I've got one more time, to uh, invite you and give you some more information on that event. There will be a cultural fair, which will have natural flags and other things as well. So thank you very much for your time. Mark your calendars, February the 2nd, Anaheim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rod Powell. Okay, my name is Rod Powell, and uh, Happy New Year. I didn't come the last council meeting. I had a little cold. And I didn't want to infect anybody. So, Chris, uh, thank, congratulations. Happy to see you in that seat. Congratulations to everyone that won election this time and, or, or were appointed. Um, I wasn't going to talk about – one of my goals this year is not to be negative, but I don't think it's negative to point out that I have concerns as, as a citizen <laughs> of this city that we had flyers that were passed out, uh, whatever the word for them is, uh, uh, that you pass out when you're running for election, and there's slate slate things. Slate mailers. Slate mailers. So that, that flyers passed yeah, it. That uh, were featuring Broadwater, Beard, and Jones. A click, in essence. Uh, and it had terminology denoting that to be a click, in essence. And it concerns me that what we have is in a, in a, in a five-person council, when there's three people that are going to fly the same way, we really have no council at all on, on a lot of issues. We have three people that are going to go the same way. I'm very concerned about that. And I'm not trying to be negative, and I don't dislike any, I, I'm, I, you know, I, really, I don't. So I, I, it concerns me. There's a lot of issues that would have made me feel better if we 
let the election flow the way it's supposed to. Let the citizens vote who they're going to vote for. And if they happen to, you know, it's not going to be where you've got three people that, that are announcing ahead of time in these slate mailers that they're, they go the same way. So I'm, I don't want to waste all my time on that one issue. Do I have five minutes still? No. No? Oh, yes, a little yes, less? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm very concerned with the medical marijuana and what's going on with it. I went to the dentist uh, a month ago. And I was surprised where I go to the dentist is at Garden Grove Boulevard in uh, Gilbert. And um, uh, I was concerned when I went up the stairs and there was a security guard down there. And I went up and I did my dental thing and came down the stairs and I said, is this for medical marijuana? I mean, I, it, it smelled like, you know, that's what it might have been. No pun intended. Um, so he said yes. And, you know, I, I, I see at these marijuana dispensary, dispensaries, medical marijuana dispensaries, and I know probably more than most people a lot of the client, type of clientele that go to those places. It's not as intended. You can, you can have a night where a bunch of people come down here in wheelchairs, and they're, they're in sincere need of that, that uh, compassionate use of medical marijuana. And they, they don't realize how in danger they are of losing what they have because of the misuse of what has happened with these dispensaries. Because they are a small, small, small percentage of the people that use that. Most of the people using that are uh, gaming the system. Uh, they're out and out laughing about it. They, they're, <coughs> they are de dealing it. They're, they're every, every criminal act in the world is going on, including big-time organized criminality. And, and it concerns me when you have that kind of stuff, sooner or later, I'm not saying, I'm certainly not pointing a finger on this one, but sooner or later there's going to be council people, maybe not in this city, but in somewhere, that are going to fall, succumb to that uh, temptation of passing the buck to get what they want. And it's going to happen if it's not already been happening. I think it has somewhere up and down this state. The, uh, the compassionate use of medical marijuana was never meant to be this. There's a small, small amount of people that actually need that. And I was all for that. Of course, let them have that if someone really needs that. But that's not what's going on at all. Um, it's not even close. Um, let's see, criminality, uh, drug dealing. Um, I think I've covered, it's, well, it's only going to get worse and worse. As you've seen, it's gotten worse and worse. It's getting bigger. It's like you've opened a can of worms. The worst thing this council did was give them uh, legitimacy that one night. I can't remember. You did something that legitimized the whole thing for them. You gave them a – you did something that was that – like, that's what you get for not being prepared, I guess. But, the, uh, you know, there was a night that they still celebrate at the – not medical marijuana, but at the people for taking – that's another thing. Medical marijuana, the people want it to go forward, as it has in some rural states, um, and become legitimate uh, – legal marijuana. I think I've said as much as I can say. With, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. The marijuana is a major problem for us. I mean, we have all these dispensaries or whatever they want to call them here in the city. They're all illegal, and yet there's not much we can do about it. The federal government says that it's all illegal. The state government says it's all legal, and there's never been any resolution. There's been three cases that were going to court. Uh, one of them was Long Beach case where they – decided they would run their own marijuana, legalize it to the people they wanted to, and two people voted, uh, two people sued them in court of law immediately, which was bound to happen. And uh, they settled out of court, so we have no idea how that went, went. There was another case in Riverside where they were trying to, and I don't know what came out of that, but there is now a case before the Supreme Court, the state of California Supreme Court, and everybody's sitting back waiting to see what's going to happen on that, to see what, what's going to do with it. Two states have just gone legal on marijuana, Wyoming and uh, Washington. And uh, I hear from the federal government that the president of the United States said it's okay. So I have no idea where this is going to end. But I didn't vote for it. I didn't, I'm not part of this mess. So anyway, we'll see. Do I have any more pink cards? Hearing none at this time, we'll close oral communications, and we will recess the city council.
uh, and the uh, and the, the uh, successor agency and go to the sanitary district. No, we're going to go to the, the, the sanitary district. That's you too, isn't it? Who's the head of the sanitary district now? You are, Mayor. You are. You are. President. President. <laughs> Bill's we, not here to interrupt you. I thought we changed it. <laughs> See, that really threw off my game. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the sanitary district. We've had oral communications. Reorganization of the sanitation district. Who would like to be uh, president of the sanitary district? Did we not do that last week? And you got chosen? Yeah. I think we, what we did last week was we sent the representative, and now it said who the representative was to go to, to the sanitary district. No, we did. Well, oh, what did we do last week then? And that too. You did both. Oh, you asked the president. To the it was Steve Jones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is yeah. the liaison. The our, our own the city liaison committee. committee, the two-member city committee. Hmm. That's what was appointed last week or last meeting. Okay. So you need a president and a vice president. Okay. Who's not the president of anything? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pham, I don't think you're the president of anything. No, sir. So why don't we make you president then? I nominate you to be president. Second. Call the vote. Motion received five yes votes. Who would like to be vice president? Oh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate Chris as vice president. Mm -hmm. Chris Beard. I second it. Call the vote. Motion received five yes votes. Consent items. Move to approve. Second. Call the vote. Motion received five yes votes. Okay, we're going to go to public hearings now, and I'm going to let Mr. Uh, Fahm do, do it from now on because he's in charge. I'll watch that. So items for consideration, actually public hearing. Any uh, comments? We have, we have no public hearing today. Okay. Uh, hearing none. All right. Items for consideration. Uh, Mr. President, your first item 5A is award a contract for sewer improvements, and Bill Murray is here to give a staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Fertel. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, Mr. President, <coughs> members of the board. Tonight, the board is being asked to award a contract to Nicola Corporation for the construction of almost 2,300 feet of sewer line in Deanna Place, Hope Street, and Trailer Way. The sewer, new sewer lines will relieve capacity deficiencies in the existing system at a cost of just over $720,000. Staff received and opened 13 bids on December 10th of last year and determined that Nicola Corporation was the lowest responsible bidder. Should the board decide to award the, con the contract tonight, the contractor can begin work in March and should be complete in J June of this year. This project was included in this year's capital improvement plan and will be paid for with sewer funds. This concludes staff's report. Any questions? <clears throat> yeah, question. Have we used them before? Excuse me? N Nicola, have we used them before as a contractor? I. It's not a familiar name to me. Okay. And why is, the, why is it the, the, the amount so different between the first and the 13th uh, competitors. It's like a yeah. million dollar difference. Yeah, that's uh, three or what? That's, that's, you know, that's up to the estimators and some of them see uh, different issues and they would have to pull in diff varying pieces of equipment that would increase their bid. Uh, a lot of times the low bidders, uh, they may in fact already own equipment. Uh, which would so if you got a backhoe out there, you you could basically not have to pay for that if you already own it. You're just paying for employees. So as opposed to somebody who has to lease that equipment. Okay. And the time completion is June. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Call for a vote. Move the issue. Second. Second. 
Motion received, five yes votes. Item 5B. Okay, 5B is an appointment of a representative to attend the Orange County Sanitation District. So this is a monthly meeting that the, uh, there's about, I think, 17 cities members that sit on the Orange County Sanitation District Board. And so uh, you would select a representative and alternative for that. Do we have a time for that? Thank you. Yeah. I nominate Steve Jones. Second. This is the one I thought I got. Yeah, I thought you last, last week, week you did. But apparently not. Yeah, they meet the fourth Wednesday of the month. I'm already scheduled for uh, orientation <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> well, then you better lobby hard yeah, to get so it. Hopefully this works. He's already done his lobbying. <laughs> Call for the vote. Call for a vote, please. Most received five yes votes. And then you need to select an alternate. Now on the liaison, who are the two members on the liaison? Is it Chris Beard and so? Member okay. Beard may be a logical choice as the alternate since he sits on the liaison committee. I nominate Mr. Beard. Second. Call for vote, please. Motion received, five yes votes. All right, number six, any matters from uh, the board? Madam Clerk, yeah, Madam Clerk, we have a lot of appointments for the different um, organizations. So can we get a list of where we were appointed from the last time and now? Any other matters? No. All right, we'll move to adjourn, reconvene on the 26th of February. Okay, are we now going on to the successor? Yes. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you want to call roll for the successor agency. Member Broadwater. Here. Member Wynn. Here. Member Fawn. Here. Vice Chair Beard. Here. Chair Jones. Here. Um, all we really have is consent items, which is the minutes from December 11th. Move to approve. Second. Call the vote. <laughs> Must receive five yes votes. We have no public hearings, no items for consideration. Any matters from agency members? See, and then we'll call for adjournment. At this time, we will be in the city council meeting. We go to uh, consent items. Mr. Mayor, it's recommended that items 4A and 4 through 4H be acted on simultaneously unless a separate discussion or action is requested by a council member. Yes, I'd like to pull item 4E. For discussion. Can I like to pull 4C, please? Could I have a motion on the balance? Second. Move. Move. Yeah, on the balance. Yeah, on the balance. Second. We have a motion. Second. Most received five yes votes. Automatic aid agreement with Orange County Fire Authority. I had a question related to the Fire Authority and... Uh, with Santa Ana having joined the fire authority, have our calls? Oh, I'll wait for the chief. Uh, chief, with the fire authority. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, uh, tonight we're. He just has a question. Just a I'm question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go and ahead. that is, uh, with the Santa Ana joining the fire authority, have our calls gone up to where we provide more service in Santa Ana? Uh, actually, they, they're, they're pretty much balanced to where they were. We haven't changed any of those fire station orders, which is how we run into their city and how they run into our city. Mm -hmm. So none of the uh, fire station orders have been changed, and this agreement just kind of puts it in uh, writing, if you will. Okay. Oh, so we've been operating like that, but without a writing. No, we're operating like that, but with a, a contract or a mutual aid agreement with the city of Santa Ana. And now it's an, an automatic aid agreement with the Orange County Fire Authority. Oh, I, I see, because they cover Santa Ana. Right. But now that we have that, does that cover other city um, besides well, we, Santa Ana? Yeah, we've had a long-standing automatic aid agreement with Orange County Fire Authority for um, other areas, like um, in the city of Stanton, city of Westminster. Um, and, and now because they've taken Santa Ana over, we're just including that in the same agreement. The reason why I'm concerned is because our police agreement with um, the same kind of aid agreement with, um, I think it was Santa Ana or Anaheim, it turned out to be that they needed us more than the times that we needed them. And then especially with the cut down of our staff because of retirement and the budget, it's, I believe it's hurting us. 
Yeah, um, part, part of the, um, the agreement is the formal portion of it. Um, there's also an operating plan, and the operating plan is an agreement between the fire chiefs. And we look at it quarterly to see how many calls we run into Santa Ana or into any area in the county, how many, run, how many times they come into our city. And then we try to balance it out through those fire station orders. So uh, we, we do keep an eye on it and make sure you know, we're balanced. not abusing them and they're not abusing us. And then um, is there a time when we can say we don't have the availability of um, sending someone out? Yeah. Um, actually, I was just looking at a report today from our dispatch center and um, Garden Grove runs uh, or, or responds to 97% of the calls that occur in Garden Grove uh, as the primary agency. So we, and, and that's the largest percentage of anyone out of our Metronet Dispatch Center out of the eight cities there. So a lot of the other cities rely on automatic aid a lot greater than we do. Um, so, so we kind of take care of our community here at home. I'm saying oh, that's what I mean. They depend on it more than we do. And so is that going to affect our service to our community? Well, that's the purpose of that operating plan is to uh, keep an eye on it, and, and we will do that. And then if um, it's not productive, do we have a way out of the agreement? Well, we can certainly uh, back out of that, out of the, you know, the top realm of those fire station orders and where we wouldn't be called as often. And that's how we adjust it to okay. create that balance. Yeah, as long as there's flexibility for us, I, I think – I would be, feel more comfortable voting for this than if there's not. Yeah, there there is flexibility in those in the adjustment of those fire station orders, and 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 we have the ability to do that without coming back to council. Thank you, Chief. We will approve of the agreement. I have a motion. Second. Call for the vote. Let's go to four E. Um, I <coughs> brought this item up because I, I wanted to make sure that we cover all of Garden Grove. I know Garden Grove shapes very differently. It's kind of very stretched out, east and west, and very stretched out, north and south. And um, Matt, do you have a, like the dimension from east to west? I think it's uh, 10, 11 miles. Wide. 11 miles wide, and then how about the north and south? I'd be guessing, but about half of that, so maybe five or six. Five. Five. Okay, five or six miles. And currently the tow company that we have, I think it's located more towards the west. And so the east side towards Santa Ana by Lewis is uh, very far from that location. And I'm um, discussing this with council to see if I can make a recommendation to, um, number one, uh, because the matter concerns uh, sometimes emergencies and, and urgent um, needs, I'd like to make sure that um, as much as I like to do business in Garden Grove, I want to make sure that the service we get is uh, what is needed, especially in emergency situation. And so I'd like to extend that coverage to three miles so we can um, take a look at all of the different facilities because I realize that different facilities have different equipments and uh, leases and also the capacity to hold the um, uh, the cars or, or the vehicles that are tow. And also the second recommendation I want to make to the council is uh, I noticed that other cities, they use more than one tow company, and I think our city, I mean, Chief might um, explain that if this is uh, reasonable or not, but um, probably I ask that Chief look into the situation, is uh, why we can't choose more than one tow company to for the convenience of the residents. Because if we have a stretch of 11 miles uh, on um, east and west and a stretch of six miles um, north and <coughs> south, uh, the convenience of the people in the east is not met if we choose someone in the west. So uh, other than uh, the location, uh, the facility, and what they have, I'd like to see if we can um, satisfy the location for the convenience of the residents and for emergency purposes. So if we could look into having two low tow contracts instead of one. We have four now. We have four now? Yeah. So then, then that would be a problem with it. And then I just like to look at if we could um, expand that to three miles. Why don't you get the, uh, the list of, when you do this, 
Get, and I don't know how this is going to take months to go ahead and go forward with it. Give us a list of the four operating companies we have now, how many toes they got, and so we can see it's equal and everything and where they are. Yes, I'd like to visit the facilities and learn more about the towing services because every time this um, issue comes up, everybody's um, either happy or unhappy um, because they say they're qualified and they're not picked. So before we pick somebody, I'd like to visit some of the facilities. Um, also, I don't know why this time we have to wait until it's, um, the contract with the last um, tow company expired before we choose uh, another one or put out another um, bid on it. I'd like to see if we can change that in the future and um, not have a gap if we can. I know we're short of staff. That might be the reason. Uh, very understandable, but if we can avoid it, uh, I think that's my recommendation. How about the three-mile radius? Is there a distinction between two or three or cheap? Well, in 2007, when we last went to RFP, uh, we expanded uh, the, the mileage from just being within the boundaries of the city of Garden Grove to two miles uh, outside the city. And uh, it is a concern for me and for the department because there is a response time. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we contractually require that the tow operators be able to respond uh, anywhere in the city within 25 minutes so we don't have intersections blocked and staff uh, tied up uh, for a prolonged period of time. And so uh, to just extend that even further out uh, could impact our uh, response time for the tow operators. I'm having a study conducted right now as to what was the uh, response time for our tow operators last year. And then secondly, a consideration is uh, to the consumer, for lack of a better description. We do order these tow, uh, vehicles towed, and uh, we do try to make it as convenient as possible uh, from a, a geographic standpoint where they have to go to retrieve their vehicles. So we, we did extend it, like I said, two miles uh, just five years ago, and uh, that would be a council decision if you want to extend that further, but I am concerned about response time. Mm -hmm. How about these four um, companies right now that are going to be doing it temporarily on a rotational basis? Are they all in the city or um, within the two miles? <coughs> two are in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two um, are just outside the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, from a, uh, I guess from a response time standpoint and from a rotation, it is a tow rotation. So one company gets called and they go to the bottom. So it really gets split <coughs> pretty much 25% to each company by the end of the year. Okay. And, what? and that's how it works. Wait, well, to me, um, I don't understand that because if you do on the rotation like that and say if the car is on the east side and the next rotation is on the west side, the response time would be 11 miles. And so I think we need to look into that if your response time is a concern, Chief. And also um, another situation is, um, that's my change of thought. I'll come back right away. Um, oh, are the... Contracts for all four companies up or just one of them? All four companies. I see. Okay. And, and the response time, um, it, it is uh, an issue, but I'm very satisfied with the response time and the service that these four um, companies have been providing us. Uh, they went through a very rigor rigorous competitive RFP process, uh, like I said, in 2007. And uh, so far they are performing uh, even beyond our expectations. I'd like to recommend that we extend the RFP to the three miles, and I also, if I could, with staff, um, arrange to meet uh, to visit all four of the current facilities and maybe some other ones that would be on the RFP. Well, I, I think that if you want to bring it back for the three miles extension, I'm pretty much pretty much opposed to it. But if you want to bring it back, I don't have any problem with it. That's certainly you're right. But I think we ought to vote in the extension for the to get the RFPs going right now. And if you want to bring it, uh, if you want to bring up the uh, three miles, why don't we put it on the uh, agenda for next uh, for, for th the next council meeting so we can take a look at the documentation of what we've got right now and ha how good they are and how bad they are. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, could I suggest maybe we do a study session so we can better understand the variables that go into how they pick, who they pick, and what they. Because, right, yeah, the, because, you know. How the, yeah, how the criteria know, are established and based on what and how. Like, from what the chief says, I'm, I mean, on rotation, then some of it wouldn't meet the three miles. And that's my concern. So 
I like to see if um, if that's what the mayor recommends. Uh, I wouldn't oppose to continuing this, but for until the next session. I don't want to continue the extension. I want the extension to go through. No, not the extension. Okay. The three miles. I'd like to discuss it just, at the next session. Just put it on the count. Yeah. Put it on the agenda. Yes, you're right. Yes. I agree with you for a work study session of some sort to get more educated on the on the matter. But uh, yeah, I think the, that's more appropriate. Yeah, the business at, at the present is the month to month extension here. That's what we're talking about. So I'm in favor of that. But I'm willing to look at. Uh, we could do a study break. session yeah. at the next meeting, first meeting in February. It's three weeks. We'll try to Thank have you. as much information for your, you know, analysis as we can at a study okay. session on February 13th. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for the extension. Move the extension. Second. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Mr. Fertel, public hearing, sir. Mr. Mayor, your public hearing tonight is to consider a protest on the fall 2012 weed abatement notices. And Sabrina is here to give a staff report on this item. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, twice a year the Fire Department initiates the City's weed abatement program and there are three steps which include the Council's declaration of a public nuisance, a public hearing after the notice to clear the lots has been sent to the property owners, and a public hearing after the lots are cleared and invoices are unpaid by the property owners. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is the third step for the public hearing to be held regarding the invoices that were sent to property owners in November. It is recommended that Council receive testimony from members of the public and take appropriate action, be it to uphold any objections and direct staff how you would like me to proceed, or to overrule the objections and direct staff how to proceed with the abatement schedule. Any questions for staff? Hearing none, we will open up the public hearing. Anybody like to speak on this issue? I just want to note that we have a letter. Well, we do have one letter. We have a speaker. Principal Council uh, give me the chance to talk about the hearing for injustice to build invoice without notice. <clears throat> I think I received for the notice is uh, for wrong um, one because I did not receive any mail, call, not notice, and or reminder from CD Garo CD regarding for this problem. Um, number two in. I have uh, my tenant. One of them is the policeman, but I confirmed with them they didn't receive any mail, call, not notice, or reminder from the Garo City either. And another thing is I have for uh, the driving lawn mower and that I bought long time for the cutting grass on my property. It's me no reason I um I don't if I receive for the notice I not cut right away um, because this bill is more than half of my monthly salary. So um, I always took care of the problem when I received a letter or call from the city because I cannot afford for the invoice with a big amount. In this case, I'm not. Um, I don't have any fault. I think I don't have any fault on this case. But now um, I think it's not fair for me and injust injustice because the city just cut the grass on my on my property, then send me a big bill without any not notice or warning letter. The amount come up with um, four hundred sixty nine dollar for the land one one three six two Garden Road Boulevard. And come up with two hundred twenty-four uh, eighty cents for um, one one three nine two Canada Boulevard. Can I ask you a question? Yes. 
How come you wait for us to send a notice to cut the gra cut it? Why don't you just cut it anyway? Why wait for us to send us a notice? I used to cut because uh, when um, the grass is um, is not go uh, throw up, uh, it's the same time. I cut thing when I stopped by to take the for the rain, and then I saw is like before they say is the higher land like in the knee. So I think it's okay, but for the city, they think it's not okay, but they just remind me to send the letter. But uh, now, I this time, I didn't receive, receive any. And then they... Well, apparently, it is not okay. I mean, basically, you should... I mean, I don't get any letters on my property because I mow the lawn. I mean, basically, why don't you just take care of the property? Then it won't be make any difference. Then you'll never get a letter from us. Yes, I, I did this care before, and then I cut the very... Uh, um, but you just said a minute ago that you waited until you got the notice. Why wait to get the notice? Why don't you just cut, clean up the property? Yes, I did. I did before. Let me ask, do you know what time, what day it went out on or where it went, the notice? The notices were sent out on September 12th, which was the day after the council that you declared the lots that I had on my list as a public nuisance. Um, the next day, they're signed by the city clerk and mailed out. So okay. September 12th, they were mailed. Do we certify them or we just mail them out? We don't certify them. We just mail them out. How's the property look now? Well, now it's clean since we sent the city contractor out to clean it. Oh, so our man did clean it, huh? Yeah, that's why she got the invoice. I did before. I had the lawnmower driver, and then I did the same thing, and I hired for the mm, people to even though dig up for the root for not growing again and again. I take care that that way is like um, so the, the root from the problem is not like um, for the big tree grown up. I have a question. Um, as far as the uh, invoice, how how she receive them, and how did she? Is it the same? We we mail her the invoice this time, or was it personal service for the, the invoice? The invoices are mailed the exact same way that the notices are mailed, and they're mailed to the exact same address. So the invoices were mailed on in November um, because oct once the notices are sent in September. Um, October is the month they have to clear their lots. If they're not cleared by the date listed in the notice, then I send the city contractor out, and they have a month um, to clear the lot. And so in November, we sent the invoices. November 26th, I believe, is when we sent the invoices. But they're sent the exact same way that I send the notices. So you received the invoice but not the notice. Yes, I received the invoice but not the notes. But in, um, in the past, I got a lot of mail coming to my address, uh, even though I... I uh, I left for one right now is because of for the um, address, uh, issue from address, and then they send to the wrong uh, all the time. And every time when I receive, and then I uh, give back to the... Why don't you just take care of the property all the time, and then you won't ever have this problem? I take care of it um, one, one year, uh, two or three times, cutting the, the empty plan. I take care I did it because I had a lot why, more. Why, why are we sending somebody out to cut it if you take care of it? It doesn't make any sense. It's not even logical. I, I don't know either. That's the reason. I don't know why the CD just um, cut it and um, don't tell me anything and don't, you know, say or boost the, uh, knock the door or something. Uh, at least uh, notice for me which way it is now in, in the day. A lot of, uh, even though um, CD had uh, my phone number, but no one call me or no one... Nobody needs to call you to tell you to take care of your own property. That should be something that you do. Do you realize that we have 175,000 people living in this city, probably 240-some thousand properties? We don't make 40,000 phone calls. We don't make any phone calls. I mean, you need to take care of your property. Yes, but the way I take care is not the way like CD wanted. Ms. So Boy, Ms. Boy, okay, we're not all gaining on you, but like you said... You only clean it like one or two times a year. That's probably About three times because it's two. Uh, just a second. Plan. Two or three times a year is still probably not enough, and that's why the grass grow very high. And no. um, just one second. Uh, did you know she was going to protest uh, the weed abatement today? 
She had called me and, and talked to me about it, and at that point there wasn't anything I could do, so I did tell her that her recourse was to come to the city council if she wanted to speak about it. Did you bring any of the photographs of her home? Um, let home. me check my folder really quick. What is it? The rental property. I tried to contact to her so many times, and then he promised to call back to me, but i waiting, waiting. In I leave the message, please call me in my break time, and I cannot receive any um, call back to her from her, and after that, I tried to contact to her so many times, and finally, I um, I, I talked to her, and she said to me in this um, meeting, and even though I didn't know where the address for the meeting in, and then I just confirmed from this afternoon, and she said in here, in this address, because in the letter, just for the future, you need to let the city know where to send you. The notices. If this is a rental, it's a business, so let the city know your mailing address so that you would get the mail in the future. And you called after the weed abatement already, so there was not much she could do about it. Questions? I have a few questions. Um, have we ever done registered letters before on situations like this, or be cost prohibitive for the city to do that? We haven't done mm -hmm. um, certified registered letters for this process, um, in at, at least in my knowledge, in the last seven years okay. that I've been taking care of it. Um, I do believe that right now we're in the process of speaking with the city attorney about that issue. Okay. And the second question is, this is weed abatement we're talking about. These are, this is not overgrown grass. These are actual weeds. This is a fire hazard we're talking about. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Let's make that clear. Yes. Um, and so she's contesting she wasn't noticed. She didn't get noticed and this and that. Right. She, the registered letter in the future could help. She's saying she didn't get the notice, but she did get the invoice. And okay. so when she called me to complain, I said that she could come and, and talk at the mm -hmm. city council. We, we have discussed it with the city attorney since um, the uh, complaint came up. And uh, the uh, certified mail, um, at least in the city attorney uh, opinion, wasn't the answer because you can also refuse to sign a letter. Right. Okay. But um, so that's not so. But we are going to develop a proof of service uh, delivery system that, that the clerk will certify that these letters went out, mm -hmm. um, and that way we have some you know documentation that we did physically mail the letters. Okay. Um, but but like I said, the the mailing addresses from the invoices to the first notice were the same addresses. So okay. How many notices easy. did we send out last September? Approximately. I'm sorry. What? How many total notices did we send out last September? Oh, um, we sent, I believe, somewhere close to 15. Let small number. Really, yeah, small number for the fact that we have about 47 to 50 lots. I believe it's right around 15. <clears throat> Don't you live close proximity to these two properties? No, not very really close. Then um, before, um, I remember. Um, Mr. Uh, Rap Florence, no, Ramizer, Rap Ramizer, he, he uh, good communicate with me and then I tell him to uh, cause enforcement in the Garden Grove City and then. The I address on your letter is 11422 Garden Grove Boulevard. Correct. And the address is on the property 11362 and 11392 Garden Grove Boulevard. Correct. They're very close proximity. No, that's one is two um, empty plan. And the Don't you drive by and check your property? I mean, you're just you're not just down you're just down the street from them. Yeah, I stopped by for one one four two two. The mayor is trying to say that you live very close. So if no, I didn't live over there. You don't live at one one four two two Garden no. Grove. Why do you put that as a return address on your letter here? Uh, because that's sending address. That's the one I received for the notice. Oh. But I didn't re I receive for the invoice. I didn't receive for the notice at the main point. This gets how worse how worse many worse. time did you get enforcement letters on this property before? You said you talked to code enforcement before. Yes, it's a very long time, but talking about the 1142. Uh, Sometimes um, Mr. Rap Ramizer talking about too high, it's still cut too uh, high or too low, and need to water. And then I transfer to for my tenant and explain to them to take care. That's the same. How many times did he do that? Yeah, I got a great. Um, 
it's not my time. It depends on the tenant take care. It's some tenant is okay, but then some tenant uh, doesn't follow, so I need to respond about that one. How often do you stop by 11422 to collect rent? Uh, usually one one month one time, but at night because I'm work at, uh, usually at eight uh, to eight thirty p.m. You know, Miss Bui, everything you say tonight tells the council you're very aware of the situation, and that's why we're trying to see it from your point of view. But it's very difficult to see that you didn't you weren't aware of the situation. You, um, you pick up mail very close to this property. You receive notice before. You come and collect rent once a month. These are all indications that you do have notices of how the condition of the property. The city may not have sent, you may not have received the notices like you claimed, but Visually, you have notice of the condition of your property because you're so um, in close proximity to the properties um, that were abated, and then you have noticed from before that there are continuing situation, and also you have a reason to come by there every month is to pick up rent. So I'm sorry, but there is no indication that you don't have noticed that the situation is is not um, I don't want to say more I don't want to make you feel bad but um, I can't see it from your point of view the the point is because I take care like this already but for the renting is different and then I stop by every month and then I see okay I, I see is for the next month I will to cut it because I have schedule. But I don't know why is it just like someone see um, uh, in my property and then want to cut and build to me is unfair and there is no reason for me not to cut the grass uh, for bill, for take the bill more than, it's a big bill more than half of my salary month. And um, you know, Especially in this time, I barely to um, to make the enough money to survive, so I cannot afford. It's a big amount like this. I know in the city, it charge a lot more than I take care of it myself. And what, like I mentioned before, we want you to take care of it yourself. That's why we charge a lot of money. We want you to take care of your own property. We do not want to be doing this. Yes, we, want, I, we do I not want your name on that list. I did take care by by the, by the the driving lawnmower. I have right now to take care is that's the property. If not, I I don't think to buy. And then I, you know, if I I, I know for the city, just tell me one word, rob me, and then I follow right away. Or now for set up the time like. Oh, three, two times is not enough. You can take up care for your property to qualify the city like one year, three times, four times, or five times. That's I follow up them that way. How, 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 how can I know? Just a second, Ms. Boy. Is this our actual cost to the city? It's our actual cost to the city plus a 25% administrative fee that covers staff costs. Exceeded. Yeah, this has to be paid from the city to a private contractor. Is that correct? It's not. Our city staff did not do the work. It's the city money, the taxpayers' money, that has paid for the work done on your property. And so I was th trying to see if it's something that our city did that we didn't have to pay out to the third party. Then I would feel more comfortable working with the numbers with you, but this number is not flexible. And to ask the rest of the residents to be responsible for what you weren't responsible for, I uh, can't do that. Oh, for my situation right now, I all I can do right now is I can trade for uh, I know the city pay for me a lot, and then I don't have money to afford in that way, and I have the driving lawnmower right now. I can trading with 
the city for another property cutting um, like the city did to mine. Well, let's let's cut this short. Why don't you go into the city hall and talk to Mr. Fertel and see if he can work out a payment plan for you. And even though like that is come up with almost 1,000, how can no, you don't have to come up all 1,000. Work with Mr. Fatal, and our clerk will give you a business card. You'll pay. That, that's why I suggest to, to her, like, I can okay. Okay. work for another property. I don't hear any motions from anybody to resolve this issue, so we're going to shut the down the public hearing, and I want you to... Get Mr. Fatel's number, go over to the city hall, he's on the third floor, and talk to him and see if you can get this problem resolved in a payment plan. Does anybody else want to speak? At this time, we'll close the public hearing. The request is to uh, adopt the, the resolution. Um, I guess. I have another question here too, yeah. Matt. As far as there's the, the letter, it seems like there's another owner, uh, another separate owner. Right. So are we going to notify that gentleman of talking with you two as well, or how are we going to resolve this other letter? It was another letter that's similar in nature mm -hmm. that says, got the bill but didn't get the notice. Right. Right. You know, well, I was in the insurance business for many, many years, and we'd send out the, the notice of payment and uh, – a lot of people didn't get the notice of payment, but they all got the notice of the policy being canceled. You know, that <laughs> constantly happened. I mean, the mail in the United States of America is pretty good. I mean, they deliver mail to Nome, Alaska, and down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Uh, I just got a lot of faith in American mail. So uh, at this point, I just send him a letter and tell him that it's the same offer, okay? Okay. Okay, we need a motion. Move the resolution. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Commissions, committee matters. I have uh, sent out a, a form here somewhere. I had it a minute ago. A list of all the commissions. Oh, there it is. Uh, I tried to get uh, appointed everybody that wanted something. I tried to do, do the best job I could. Now, you see, no appointments on the sanitary district. Only one person applied for it. And uh, I guess nobody wants to be on the sanitary district. It doesn't sound too good. However, there is actually, in my opinion, no use to even have a sanitary district. Uh, they meet four times a year, and our staff turns over every rock they can, finding the way to put an agenda together for them. And this was actually forced upon us by the uh, LAFCO, what, 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yes, because we took over the sanitary district at that time. I'd like you to look into it, see if there's a way we could dissolve the sanitary district. If not, we will, appoint, we will resurrect and appoint members to it later on. Anybody like to accept this or... I make a motion to accept. Second. This is for the whole balance. Everything. We have a motion and a second. Did I hear a second? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Appointments to public agency boards, Orange County Vector Control. I would like to appoint, what is her name? I don't want to say it if it's not the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Robin. What is Robin's last name? Macario. Macario. I'd like to uh, appoint Robin Macario to the vector control. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Okay, we have uh, Santa Ana River Flood Control Agency. I think we researched that, and it does need to be an elected but they may or may not be meeting too much longer, but it does need to be a, a council member. Anybody? It's a, a very boring meeting. Uh, I, if, if, if nobody wants to, I'll take it. Any idea the where they meet or 
Pardon me? Any idea when they meet or how? Uh, no. I don't even know if it's monthly, quarterly. No. You spoke up, so you get it. <laughs> we have a Bruce motion to the second. current member. We have a motion to appoint Bruce Brawler in a second. Call for the vote. Motion received five yes votes. Items for consideration. Mr. Mayor, your item for consideration is an agreement with Northrop Grumman for uh, police department's computer-aided dispatch system, and uh, Travis Whitman is here to give a staff report on the item. Travis, please. Good evening, Mayor Broadwater, members of the City Council. I'm here this evening representing the police department to seek approval to renew the city's contract with Northrop Grumman to service the department's computer-aided dispatch system, also known as the CAD, and mobile computer, computer terminals through October 31st of 2017. CAD was originally installed in 1999 and the warranties expired in 2002. And since that time, the city continued to receive contracted service through Northrop Grumman uh, for system support. The system uses proprietary software and Northrop Grumman is the only company that can service this equipment. The CAD is a mission critical piece of equipment and it is necessary to maintain a service contract to ensure functionality and efficiency. And pursuant to Garden Grove Municipal Code 2.50.060, subsection D, and based on the recommendation from the City's Information Technology Department, the Finance Director has determined that the hardware and software services that are subject of these agreements can only be obtained through Northrop Grumman. The total cost of the contract through October 31, 2017 is $579,329 and will be paid in payments over five years. Funds for CAD maintenance are allocated annually, so there will be no additional impact to the City's general fund. And we recommend that the City Council approve the attached master maintenance agreement and software maintenance subagreement with Northam Grumman for the software support not to exceed $579,329 and authorize the City Manager to execute the agreement, including making any modifications as, appro as appropriate during the contract period for the contracted services. And this concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, since we are, since they are the only ones to, that does this, are we getting the same deal as all the other cities? Uh, every contract is negotiated separately, and every city contracts or negotiates with um, various different CAD vendors. Uh, there are several different vendors throughout the oh, nation. There are different vendors, but one program. Is that what you're saying? CAD program. Well, each each CAD program does relatively the same function, uh, but they do function differently depending on the customization that's required by the city. We get our own customized um, require criteria for the program? Yes, that's oh, correct. This, this system was custom built for us. I got it. Um, I move to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve. Uh, guys, before we do that, just a quick question. Um, I noticed in there probably just standard language, but the limited warranty bit about how Northrop makes no warranty here and under either express or implied. Um, any issues with that, Tom, as far as that blanket disclaimer? I would <clears throat> tend to have a lot of issues with this type of language, but I can tell you that the city has found over time that the leverage in negotiating with software companies is highly unfavorable. And in general, we have been forced to accept form language from software companies that we would not in otherwise other circumstances do. So I agree with your comment, but I think that the ability, uh, because we have asked on numerous occasions to modify this type of language, we have found that companies in this field have been completely unwilling to do so, and that reflects the fact that they've custom designed the system and <coughs> we have no ability to go elsewhere to uh, obtain the service. In practice, Travis, have they been supportive and understanding when we need uh, issues resolved? Yes, very supportive. Um, we contact them about two times a month on problems that we occur with the system, and we are contacted by their representative, which is a local representative, at least once a week. And we have had a catastrophic failure, and they were able to bring us back up relatively quickly with uh, no data lost. Thank you. Grumman Northrop, the only, the only airframe corporation left that's not owned by Boeing. 
Call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Let's go to ordinances. Mr. Mayor, uh, item 8A. Uh, Matt, if, uh, Mr. Mayor, this is a second reading on an item that I recused from last time, so I'm going to do the same again this time. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Fertel. It's an ordinance for second reading, ordinance number 2826, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove adopting development agreement number DA18812 between the City of Garden Grove and Garden Grove 14051 Hope, LLC. Gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Steve can come back in. Motion received for yes votes. Okay. Everybody that's here to have a sign off on your school thing tonight, which looks like the majority of you. <laughs> About another ten minutes and we'll we'll be done. Okay? Okay. Matters from the city council members, the city manager, uh, Chris Baird. I'd just like to acknowledge the uh, Onyang students who came and visited uh, recently. They just left on Sunday. It was a great um, experience, especially for the host families. And they, I know they had a good time. It was a very educational uh, opportunity for them. It's a great program. The sister city. Uh, South Korea, Ajang is our sister city over there. And I want to thank the departments for being involved and sharing, um, uh, being a part of the tour for them. They visited City Hall, uh, the Garden Grove School District. They, they went to Pacifica High School, had a great time there. I want to thank all the sister city volunteers. They did a great job. And the host families, uh, I had the good fortune of being one of those host families and for the third year, and it's a great experience. I encourage anybody, uh, any family that uh, would like to participate. It's a great program. And um, our students will be going over there. We'll have 10 Garden Grove students from our district going over in, to Anyang in April. And I'm sure they'll have a, just a, as great an experience. It's a very hospitable city. Um, and they're going to have a great, uh, great stay there, I know. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll learn a lot from, from their experience. That was one item I'd like to talk about just recently that we had in the Garden Grove Journal, Something Stinks. Says West Siders. Uh, that's in reference to odors that uh, apparently were thought were coming from the joint training base over in Los Alamitos. I had visited uh, that base today, as a matter of fact, and um, just want to let people know uh, there is a mulching operation over there, not composting. So people need to be aware of that. And they've had minimal uh, experiences of people reporting problems and odors. And I want to say I met with the colonel on the base, uh, the assistant deputy commander, and they are very, very responsive to any kind of uh, complaint or issue or concern that comes up related to odors coming from the base. And they are very uh, active, reactive, and proactive, I should say. Now, it's a, it's a big place, 1,400 uh, acres, and a lot of issues uh, are attributed to them, but um, when issues do come up at this location, they're investigated uh, by the personnel on the base, but also the people have a means of notifying or contacting the Air Quality Management District, which is, uh, and, and to look at the records, there's been um, minimal last year, and I think they've had a few this year. So I think we as a city may want to get out that information to citizens. If they have an issue with an odor in the west end of the town, um, they will investigate it to see if it is actually coming from the base. There's possible different sources, and I think they had less than five last uh, the last year, year and a half. So, and they offer tours to, and they actually to, to people who want to visit the base and see their composting. No, excuse me, their mulching operation. <laughs> And I was down there today, and I couldn't smell anything. The wind was coming up. So uh, they also have a farm there where they raise um, vegetables. They're very um, – they monitor that very well. They have a full-time environmental position on the base. So they are – it's impressive how responsive they are to any kind of complaint. So I just want to make that clear to anybody. And I think we can, as a city, get the information out to people to either AQMD – or um, through the base contact, they have a number that you can call for people who may detect an odor and think it's coming from the base. They will respond to it. 
and there's a lot of voters in the area. It's a big area, but there's also golf courses. Well, there's a golf course there that, that has landscaping and fertilization. There is no fertilization on the crops that are grown on the base as well. Very informative tour that I took. This is the second time I did. I would encourage other council members if they have the opportunity to go just to see the base, see where it is, see what they do on there. Uh, maybe Councilman Fawn has already seen it, or I would encourage you to go if you haven't. It's very impressive. Uh, you can learn a lot from it. So I just want to make that clear. They are going to be in contact with the reporter of the story to let them know how things are, how things operate there and how they minimize, what they do to minimize if there is an odor. And the odor is not of a manure or any kind of composting odor. It's a wood chip mulching operation that they do on there. And that's uh, the possible source. And again, the reports have not been conclusive. That's where the source of some of these odors are coming from. So I just want to advise the public and if, if the need be, we have more complaints in that, that particular area, we can get information out to citizens on who to contact on the base or the Air Quality Management District. Uh, that was one item. I want to express um, my gratitude uh, or the, for attending a speaker's uh, series with the War uh, Museum Bureau. They had a, a wonderful, excellent speaker and is uh, seeing these students in the audience really um, that would be an educational experience for any civics uh, or any history class at a high school level to know and hear firsthand the experiences of those people who fought in that war and their remembrance. And this one particular speaker, um, the mayor could probably speak about it better, um, was just inspirational, informative, and uh, it's just just a moving. A talk that this woman gave Eileen Moore. She's a appeals court judge, and she was just so worthwhile. And every speaker I've heard at this series has been very educational from a historical perspective, from, from a personal level. It's very touching. I would encourage uh, uh, high school students if, in, or high school teachers to use that as an opportunity, a learning experience for their students. Um, I want to make something people aware of a, a news article that just came out today on water um, salination, the Poseidon Project. I think that's something we need to put on our radar as a city. It's going to be coming out in 2017, but it may, it's about, uh, it'll be located in Huntington Beach. Uh, I want to keep an eye on that as a city, uh, how, we'll, how it may affect us, how it may affect our water rates down the road, how we may participate in it. So I just want to bring that up as a future item. And uh, lastly, I don't know if this is an appropriate time to do this, but the West Garden Grove Little League. Is it possible to get a status report or some comment? I can do it. Okay. Okay, there's going to be uh, – it looks like they're going to be able to work it out on the west side from what I'm hearing. They're going to use uh, it's a couple of the other schools, and they're going to use our uh, facility at Chapman and uh, Catella for, on Sunday. Chapman and uh, – Not. Not Wood. Uh, no, not Wood. Chapman and uh, Not. Yes, on uh, Sunday. So they're, they're going to resolve the problem, it looks to me like. Well, that's good to hear. I was disappointed that the, we, we weren't able to have a meeting, but uh, there is some uh, sign of having the, the season will happen, which is good for the Little League, happening at West Garden Grove. Uh, I think what it came down to was a legal issue on the school district's part. I was somewhat disappointed that we couldn't work out a means, um, or the city, excuse me, the school district didn't work out the means from a legal liability perspective to make it work on the Bell side. I think it had the, the, the all the speakers that came last week had some very good points. And so uh, as long as it's in West Garden Grove, um, I think that's a good thing. I wish we would have had that meeting with the school district and the representatives and the contractor. Uh, if there's any possibility of continuing to do that, I would still like encourage to have a meeting with them. doesn't seem that we may, but uh, if we can work it out, uh, I'd like to pursue that one last effort, if at all, to work out with their contractor, with school board representatives, to see if there's one final possibility to use the Bell site. That's all the comments I have. Dina? Thank you. Uh, I want to report that uh, I want to thank all the residents that participated by in Garden Grove, because I heard that our sale rate went up um, this last quarter. So that means that uh, everybody has contributed to that, and everyone should be uh, commended for that. Uh, 
Uh, also, the Tet Festival is coming up, and the Tet Festival is located in the uh, <coughs> Garden Grove Park uh, on Garden Grove Boulevard every year. This year, it will fall on February 8, 9, and 10 at the park, and they're run by the UVSA Union of Vietnamese Student Association, which is an association of Vietnamese American students from uh, universities, colleges, and uh, the local high schools. And they uh, raise funds for a very good cause. Uh, a lot of it is donated back into the community, uh, and particularly Garden Grove. We get a share of that, too. Uh, I want to wish them good luck in this year's festival, and that hopefully it will not rain. Um, also, um, I wanted to um, thank um, the staff for all the studies that um, they did on um, all their, the contracts. Uh, it's a lot of people don't know, but um, before we even vote up here, we have to sit down and look at those contracts. And uh, we sometime will ask a few questions so you get a clearer picture of it, but we don't expect you to understand all of it because um, it's a lot to go over each of um, the meeting, before the meeting. Each, each of the council members have like a uh, from a one inch to two inches thick um, agenda review materials to re to read through and to share that with you during the meeting would probably take uh, all night <laughs> past midnight. So uh, we're we are sorry if we can't go all uh, over all the materials with you. But um, rest assured that we do go over the materials and uh, we are trying our best to make the best decision for the city, especially in this time um, of hard economics. Um, situation. Uh, again, please remember to buy in Garden Grove, and um, thanks, Beatrice, for reminding us about the Black History Month for February, and I want to uh, also thank the ladies who came and um, advertised the Walk for Cancer. Uh, they do a very good job every year. They started about four years ago, and it's a strong um, event. Uh, I hope everyone will come out to support them, and even they picked um, a place in Garden Grove to meet for this, um, to organize this event, which is a Marie Callender's on Brookhurst that's located in Garden Grove. I want to thank those ladies for picking a business in Garden Grove to promote. Chris Farm. I just want to thank all the students out there for uh, coming in here and seeing how we do business here in the city. I also want to say that uh, what uh, Councilman Beard said about the, uh, the uh, speaker series we had last Thursday. If you haven't seen it, guys, I encourage you to just because of the fact that it's like history come alive. You know, when I was there, I, I got to see and witness all the veterans who fought in the Vietnam War. It was so just compelling to see their stories and hear what they have to go through. So I encourage everyone out there and in our community, too, to uh, go out there and take up and hear the next speaker series. Because what we're doing is everything that we're doing as far as the speaker is going towards raising awareness and funds for the Vietnam War Museum here in Garden Grove. And I'm hoping that we can actually get the project off the ground because aside from the fact that it would be great for our community and more tourism, it's going to be able to allow us to learn more and remember the history that uh, we've worked so hard to get here. So I hope you come out to support uh, us in the next speaker series. Thank you so much. <coughs> Thank you. A couple things. Um, I'd like to chime in on what uh, Councilmember Beard was talking about with regard to the odor in West Garden Grove. Um, several years ago when that issue first came up, the city surrounding the base um, formed kind of an ad hoc committee comprised, it was supposed to be of uh, mayors and city managers and whatnot from those surrounding cities. And um, during that year, year and a half that that group convened regularly, call it monthly, with each other and probably quarterly with the people of the base. And there was a lot of rollover on the, you know, the administration of the base during that time frame too. Um, Mayor Dalton had asked me to sit in on it, so I was kind of the active participant in that group. So I got pretty deep into the details of it. So I still couldn't tell you the technical difference between composting and mulching, but they kind of smell the same. And w what happens there is they've sort of learned how to keep the pile down to sort of a, a, a level that sort of maximizes their productivity but keeps it just under the smelly radar, you know. And what happens is anytime there's um, there's a big pile combined with moisture like rain, and then that's followed by hot days. Um, you, you get that stinky, steamy sort of thing a day or two afterwards. So there's still a propensity for it. They've sort of mitigated it to just to the point where that doesn't happen that often. Um, and then they get it back under control. So I had asked staff if they would 
forward it to whoever is still remaining. There's probably some turnover on that group as well, both from a city administration standpoint and as well as electeds, but to try and re-engage that group because each group had slightly different concerns or problems with regard to the operation. For instance, if you're on the um, Los Alamitos or Seal Beach side of it, the concern was the trucks coming in out of there putting dirt and stuff all over the streets as they were coming in and out to dump stuff off or pick stuff up or whatever. Um, so they had issue with that. The smell migrates into West Garden Grove. So, you know, we each had kind of our unique issues, but we figured we'd band together. So we did actually bring them to the table, kind of got them talking. Um, they're, uh, they'll meet with you, but they're a tricky group to really pin down or to get them to be um, transparent about what it is they're doing there and how they're doing it. But we just got to keep fighting the fight and um, keep the pressure up and every time this comes up and try and get them to give us something we can live with. Um, secondly, I just want to congratulate all the newly appointed uh, commissioners and committee members in the city. Um, this is a great city and it's a great honor to serve on these commissions. I hope everybody that got appointed takes that very seriously, um, attends, gets actively involved and tries to help make the city a better place through their, through their official uh, responsibilities in that regard. Thank you. Uh, I, you guys about covered everything. I thought the, uh, the, the Vietnam uh, speaker series was excellent. Uh, she was good, and, and I, this wasn't the first time I heard her speak, but uh, she was better this time than she was last time. She's really good. Uh, we're going to have another speaker in another month or so, and uh, I'm not sure who it is, but I'm sure it'll be an excellent speaker. Everybody we've had has been great so far. At this time, I'd like to close this meeting in the name of a lady by the name of Tony, Tony Rubin. Tony passed away in her sleep on July, January 11th of this month, and... Uh, this year, and she was highly involved in the city of Garden Grove. She involved everything they volunteered for. She was involved in it. She's involved in the Central Neighborhood Garden Grove uh, Association. In fact, she was one of the key people that started it. Uh, she she could she would constantly let me know how to vote on things. <laughs> I mean, she was right there. In fact, we had to tell her to be quiet the other night, the meeting before she passed away. We're going to miss her a lot, and so tonight we'd like to close this meeting in the name of Tony Rubin, Toby Rubin. And so we will come back on, what day are we coming back on, guys? February 12th. February 12th. And we are...